Model steam engines and boilers, part 57. Steel, copper and brass are suitable construction materials for model steam boilers. This is a compilation video which is over 12 minutes long. I'm using this to attempt to answer quite a lot of frequently asked questions that I receive from viewers. And on screen at the moment is something that is not miniature in any way. This is a Stania Black 5. I would think it has a steel boiler with maybe a copper firebox, which is a good combination. But how does it work when the boiler is not as big as the one on the Black 5? This, for instance, is on a 7.25 inch gauge, narrow gauge locomotive at Pugney's Water Park in Wakefield. And it runs on the line owned by my friend Bob Brocklehurst. This is a very nice engine, and you could call it a sort of small full size one, really, because the driver actually does sit inside it. This engine has a professionally built steel welded boiler, and provided that the engine is well cared for, a steel boiler of this size should last quite a long time. This clip shows an even larger small locomotive. This beautiful locomotive has been put together by the skilled hands of the people who work at the steam workshop, and this also has a steel boiler. This is a copper boiler. It's of copper and silver soldered construction. It's the one from the simplex that I'm working on, and this photograph was taken at the steam workshop when it was being tested. Here's another copper boiler. This is a Stuart HB6, a very nice boiler. This one is designed to be gas-fired. As indeed are these, this is a pair of Cotswold Heritage boilers. You will see now that there's sort of a trend being established. Every boiler that I'm showing you on screen, which is a small boiler, is made from copper. Even this one, which is a little bit bigger, 6 inches in diameter and quite tall. This is the really excellent Castle Steam V6 boiler, and it's currently supplying steam to a Stuart 5A steam engine. And with its two and a quarter inch bore cylinder, it has quite a good appetite for steam. In this clip, I'm shoveling plenty of coal into the fire hole. This boiler has quite a high steaming capacity, and once all this coal that I'm putting on the fire catches light, it will produce more than enough steam for a 5A. There are a couple of reasons why boilers are made from steel rather than copper. The first one is the price. Copper is quite expensive. Once upon a time I built a Sweet William. This was an 042 narrow gauge locomotive in 7 and a quarter inch gauge and the boiler kit alone for this was around 15 or 1600 pounds. And that's a long time ago. And no it didn't stop there. There was then the cost of having the boiler built by my good friend the late Randy Blackburn who also built the boiler for my 7 and a quarter inch gauge Titch and a Stania Black 5 in 7 and a quarter inch gauge that I used to have. And then, on top of that, is the cost of the silver solder, which pushes the price up to a very high price. Apart from the price then, what is the other disadvantage of having a copper boiler? And the answer to that one is strength for the application. This great Foden steam lorry is owned by my friend Dave Hall, and all this motion work that you can see spinning round has to be supported by the boiler itself. This engine also has a steel boiler. This clip shows the display in the tent at the same rally, and as you can see, these are all very small models, and the small Mamod type don't even have copper boilers. Their boilers are made from extruded brass. I saw a video once on YouTube showing how they made them, and it was quite amazing. A while back, I rebuilt an old Mamod TE1A traction engine. The boiler was definitely past its sell-by date, and the bush where the whistle fitted was very badly damaged. In the end, I bought a complete boiler assembly from eBay. What did I do with the old boiler? I chopped it in half to have a look inside it. Brass is not a good material to make boilers out of. It's OK for these very small steam toys that run on 10 or 15 pounds per square inch, but above that, it's dangerous to use brass. The main problem is de-zincification, where the brass starts to break down and the zinc separates from the main body of the material. But they work fine and they're quite safe at these very low pressures. Here's the engine running and as you can see it runs rather well. This is a Marky traction engine, quite a nice little thing, one step up from a Mamod, very small and fitted with a copper boiler. 
This was one that I repaired and converted to gas firing. Again, it's very much in the steam toy end of the market, but it's safe because it runs at a much higher pressure than a Mamod, and by having a substantial copper boiler, there's a good margin of error. This is something different. This is a really old Bassett Low traction engine in approximately two inch scale, I would say. But this one has had a new boiler. As you can see, there's a safety valve on the barrel, which you wouldn't normally find on a traction engine. The real place for the safety valve, and it has one fitted on top of the regulator steam chest. I think this boiler was fitted by Maxitrack because it's not silver soldered. This is a copper welded boiler which I suppose is better than silver soldering because if you overheat the boiler, well, the boiler's going to take a long time before it melts. This is my four and a half inch scale traction engine and it's a bit unusual. It's a big engine, it's not small at all. If you look at the size of me, and I'm not small at all either, sat behind it, you'll see how big it is. It's seven feet long. With a traction engine, the boiler is a structural part of the system. The two plates that support the motion and the wheels, etc., bolt to the boiler at the back, and the front wheels, of course, at the front. To make this boiler strong enough to do all this supporting of major components, when it was built, the barrel was reinforced. I have some photographs in an album, and it shows this being done. So you may be thinking, why didn't I buy a steel boiler traction engine? Well, I'm not a young man anymore, I'm 68, which okay, is younger than some and older than others. One of the problems with steel boilers is after a while, and that's a few years, it's not like after a few months, you will generally need to replace the tubes. They can be knocked out and refitted. If you buy a traction engine with a brand new steel boiler and look after it, like blowing it down to get rid of all the water after every run, combined with using water treatment that apparently coats the inside of the boiler with tannin which slows down the rusting process. There's no reason why a steel boiler couldn't last quite a long time but I didn't want to take the chance because this was a used model built in 1995 and when I saw a thing of this size that was a copper boiler I thought yes this is the one for me. To repeat the question from the beginning of this episode, which is the better material to use for a model steam boiler? If you can afford the cost of a large, thick-walled copper boiler, then that's what I would go for. But from a cost point of view, a commercially manufactured steel boiler welded together by a coded welder should be okay for at least a decade before it needs anything doing at it. On screen at the moment is a typical horizontal centre flue boiler. And this is one of a range of boilers that used to be made by Max Steam. A man called Mike Abbott in Macclesfield made them to a very high standard. The design features, as in the name, a centre flue that goes all the way down the boiler. The horizontal centre flue changes to a vertical flue where you can fit a chimney, as shown here. The tube, though, is not just a tube because crisscrossed inside the horizontal part of the centre flue are lots of water tubes and this gives a much higher surface area for heating the water. In the previous episode I showed a typical Babcock design of boiler where the water tubes just hang below the main barrel. Some boilers have a centre flue but no cross water tubes like this one. It's an old steam toy that I refurbished a while back and it's a bit different because it also has the engine attached to it. Some of these small vintage steam toys are quite complicated. This is the safety valve, quite ingenious. Very similar to a Mamod type, it's just a spring which pulls an O-ring down to seal it and when the pressure reaches a certain level, the O-ring lifts and the steam escapes. This is a Stuart Models HB6 boiler and what a work of art this is. It takes cross water tubes to a whole different level. Some centre-flue boilers with water tubes simply have cross tubes, vertical ones and horizontal ones. But the cross water tubes in this type of boiler are very cleverly designed. They're designed to capture as much heat as possible, that's why they're radiated in the manner that they are. Building boilers this way makes for a more efficient heat exchange system. And while on the subject of heat, this is the heater that fits into the end of the boiler. As you can see, it's a large ceramic type burner. 
And the good thing about this ceramic burner is that it has the correct type of ceramic. Because some ceramic burners these days use a different kind of ceramic and it's not very good. They do tend to overheat. I had many discussions with Mike Abbott from Max Steam regarding the problems with ceramic burners generally. And we both came to the conclusion that this type of ceramic is the best stuff to use if you can get it. Here's a quick tip. When using gas-fired boilers, you don't need to fill the boiler right to the top. Aim for approximately half a gauge glass full of water. That way you will raise steam quickly and you may even have enough gas left to run your engine. This boiler powers a twin Stuart Victoria. And it really does provide more than enough steam for this. I could probably run two or three of these twin Victorias on an HB6 boiler. A twin Victoria consists of two cylinders, obviously, both of which have a bore of one inch. And at this point the engine is running quite well, and when I look at the pressure gauge on the boiler, it's still at 60 pounds per square inch. And this is mainly due to the design of the boiler and the burner. Before gas firing became popular, many weird and wonderful designs of burner were out there. Most were like modified paraffin blow lamps, some even used petrol. These days though, gas firing is very convenient for firing model boilers. If you get into trouble with low water, you can just turn the gas off, an instant cut off of the heat source. This was the later type of Max Steam burner, and I changed the ceramic in it for an earlier type of ceramic. You can see the difference, and this type of ceramic burns a lot hotter. Even though it may not look like it, this type of ceramic is far better than the previous one shown. I found that this worked much better if I pulled it out slightly from the flue tube. The main problem with ceramic burners is making sure you get enough secondary air for complete combustion of the gases. This boiler, by the way, is called a Scotch return tube type, and I'll feature it in a separate video. For the moment, I'm just going to leave the engine running to the end of the video, which won't be long. I'd just like to say, as usual, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are